Um, so flash devices, so why flash? I originally started again because I was just interested in seeing you know, how far we could take XP. Uh, at the time, you know, now it doesn't seem like a big deal, but at the time it was, it was pretty new of, trying to, of thinking that you could run XP off of uh, you know, a small uh, compact flash card. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of the qualities of uh, flash, you know, shock resistance, no spin up time, which is great for resuming from sleep, because when you resume from sleep, the hard drive needs to spin up. So if you have a flash device, you can resume from sleep instantaneously. Like my laptop here with my Vertex SSD, as soon as I open up the, the lid, it's, it's up at the logon prompt already. I don't need to wait for the hard drive to spin up. Um, you know, compact flash has a lot of issues. Honestly, I don't think it's worth it nowadays. SSDs are, are a lot better. Um, there's, there's things that you have to worry about with compact flash cards because typical commercial compact flash cards work in what's called removable mode. So Windows will see it as a removable hard disk. You can fool it into running off of the removable hard disk, but things like ACPI, you know, the, the uh, power saving settings will not work you know, resume from standby, hibernation, it'll just lock up. You won't even get a, a blue screen. It just will lock up. Microsoft acknowledges, acknowledges that, but I don't think it's on their radar. Uh, embedded USB flash devices. I actually brought one here. Uh, I worked with um, an M-Systems UDoc. They later got bought by SanDisk. Uh, that's an image up there uh, to the right. Um, I can trust that I can pass this around and I'll get it at the end, hopefully. Uh, this, is, uh, this is a sample that they had sent me back in like 2004, I think. This is 512, but they used to go up to uh, two gigs. Uh, they've been discontinued. Obviously, there really isn't that much uh, uh, need for it. It would just jack into your uh, USB header, your internal USB header. Rob uh, had another product similar from Intel, I believe, on the, on, on the blogs uh, a couple weeks ago. Mm -hmm. um, this was awesome at the time. I mean, this thing was so fast. And uh, it was specifically made for like embedded Linux and Windows embedded. So they had custom drivers because obviously XP and Windows are not configured to run off of USB. But uh, it, it was great and I did manage to get it to run just regular retail XP, but it was a pretty, pretty big headache. So I'll just pass this around. You can just take a look at it just to get an idea of how small that was. And uh, there is a, a gentleman out there, Dietmar, from, uh, he originally started in the 911cd.net forums who wrote a bunch of tutorials on getting XP to boot off of USB. Um, so if you're interested, I'd definitely go check it out. So SSDs, like we said, no hacks needed, great price performance, you don't need EWF necessarily, and Windows 7 comes with uh, SSD optimizations uh, in them. And one last thing, Virtual hard drives. I don't know if anyone's played around with this. This is new to Windows 7. Windows 7, you can basically boot off of a virtual hard drive. This is a, uh, a single file based hard drive that like Hyper-V, uh, Virtual PC, and, and uh, Virtual Server use. It's a great way to quickly get your, your Windows 7 image uh, running because you can test it out again in a virtual machine. And then all you need to do is copy that single file onto your device, boot up, you know, you need to set some BCD uh, settings. It's pretty easy. You know, there's minimal performance impact. There are some things, you know, hibernation will not work. But, you know, this is a great way of, of you know, of at least testing things out. Because all you need to do is just copy a single file and that's it. And, and you can go.